go, let's go back in time, 1920s, 19, 1910s, 1920s. And I'm going to get to your statement, Crockin, about light squares and dark squares. I'm going to jump on that one in a second, but I'm, I'm going to get to it. Just let me finish this. Everybody knows you got to control the center. So why is it that the hypermoderns, Nimzovich, Reddy, uh, Alekhine, Breyer, Grunfeld, why do they go, I'm not putting nothing in the center? Okay, dummy, I'm putting that. Nah, nah, I'm not putting it. Oh, you're an idiot. How do you play chess? I'm just letting you have the center. Wow, this guy's a real moron. Like, you're a real moron for letting me grab the center like this. That's what they thought back in that time. Turns out, you can give away the center and attack it out of its mind later. So... Even this move, like I'm, this has got to be win the most winningest position you've ever seen in chess ever, right? Ever. Thank you, Akai, for subscribing at tier one. This has got to be the dumbest way to play chess in the history of time. You're going to castle too? Shouldn't I just be able to kill you with e Like I should be able to kill you right now. Like your pieces are stupid. I mean, I'm just mauling you with center pawns. This was the theory before, until the guy's like, you can do that if you like. You're dropping back? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dominate. I got the center. I am all over you, son. The guy's like, well, the, mo the point of my strategy is to gift you the center, which was good for 40 plus years. Squatch your main, thank you so much for the three months subscription. The idea of the center was to give up. The idea was, here's a center uh, the, the pawn center has been the god, the pillar of chess, the literal pillar of chess, unassailable since Morphe. So we're going 60, yeah, six decades where the pawn center is king. Like we, uh, and these clowns come along and say, you can have your stinking pawn center. I'm going to break it in half. You just dominated and I'm going to now break it in half. Your center is collapsing before your very eyes. Now you can't even play a move like d5 because I'm ripping your pawn. Thank you very much for advancing it. You want to take this one? That's good. I'm taking this one. This one's going to die later. But your beautiful pawn center, you know where it went? It's up in smoke. It's gone. Look at them. They're ugly. You can't maintain the center anymore. Black's ready to take, crack this pawn, then crack this one. Black is even going to bring a knight to c6. And the hypermoderns are like, yeah. You think this is good and it's bad. You know how it took guys like Tarish who were like, no, you cannot play like this. You just can't. Because their ideas were not up to that time yet. They hadn't, they were entrenched in old ideas. So their old ideas made them make moves that made sense to them. Those moves made sense. Control the center. And then the move, once you have the idea of central control is dominant, pawns in the center will overrun you, then you'll make those moves, right? That fit that. Until somebody says, no, those pawns, they're going to become targets. I'm going to hit them later. I'm not going to hit them now. I'm going to hit them later. And it failed at first, like some of these didn't work. And then slowly but surely, it turned out to be nice. And then the one, when people started beating like the real players, like when Reddy beat Capablanca, Capablanca, Capablanca went like eight years without losing a game. How do you go eight years without losing a game? How do you do that? Eight years without losing a, 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 what? Who does that, right? Who does that? But Reddy did it to Capablanca. You know how Reddy did it against Capablanca? Well, I'm gonna show you as I'm discussing it. I'm, I'm freestyling right now. All my prep is out the window, except for the retro rate analysis prep. Where am I? Mega database. Let's do Reddy Capablanca. If you haven't seen it, you're going to see it right now. All right. Let me see if I can find this game real quick. Ready versus Capablanca. These are classics. We're going way back in time to the key games that buttress chess understanding. All right. Now, Capablanca used to roll your man. Like, roll your man ready. Okay. So, ready on move one. Knight f3. No pawn in the center. All right. This is the early 1900s. You can't play chess like this. No pawn in the center. But Kappa had already been schooled on this. Now C4. We'll put a side pawn. 
But watch how he plays the rest of it. G6. B4. This is just bad. Like, this is just the hyper... Even the computers are like, now you can't do this. What are you doing? You're pushing wing. What is this about? It's supposed to be controlling the center somehow. You don't tell people like ready stuff like that. It's like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Castles. Let me figure out the other one. My center pawns are not getting in the middle. They're just not. So Kappa's like, all right, we're going to fight you there too. Castles, D6. He could push a pawn to D4, y'all. He could just put it there. No, he's not interested. I'm like, all right. Let me put pawns in the center. Kappa couldn't help us. Like, sooner or later, I'm putting something in the center. We're going to hang on the side first. We're going to bring pieces. You attack. Okay, you do what you like. We're going to maneuver in our own camp. I'm not saying these are great winning, crushing ideas. I'm just letting you know how the hypermodern school played. And to beat a guy like Kappa was incredible. Another pawn in the center. I said, yeah, but that might be a weakness. Could be. D5 could be a weakness. Knight F8. Slow. And what does he do? He looks at the center and he says, time to attack it. Time to attack it. Now, the engines look at this now and go, man, it's probably still fine for black. But this was a potent idea. If I give you the center and I attack it later, I have chances. I may not be better, but I have chances. Bishop e4, great move. Queen c3, along the diagonal. Takes, takes. Knight back. Nice little diagonal action. Ready says, no problem. What did you just do? You put your queen on c3, now you put your queen back. Yeah, but your knight's gone from this square. My queen was on c2. So in effect, is your knight on a really good square here? That's your real question. He took and took. Now he has this c5 square. Looks like a good square, right? Looks like a good square. Isn't this pawn hanging? Well, you could take it if you want to. You might, you might could get your feelings hurt. We'll play just about any move here. Let's drop the king back. And let's drop this on you. Oops. Fork and a discovered attack. Thanks you very much. Thanks very much for the exchange. So you can't steal the pawn. So you got to make another move. So what happened here? He... Oh, sorry. My bad. Yeah, <laughs> that is exactly what happened. <laughs> It's, ex it's exactly what went down. But here, what's interesting here is that Reddy doesn't play knight d2. In the game, Reddy plays rook takes on d6. Which you could even win material. Even winning material and giving up the, this bishop along the diagonal didn't quite deter him. I guess this line here, give me the rook. Give me the rook. Give me this piece. Give me this piece is a sharp line where white ends up better in this position with a knight going to d5, a knight going to c4, everybody attacking. White's for choice here, but Reddy didn't want to go for any of this. So Reddy opted instead in this position for rook takes d6, which keeps him with an enduring advantage. Kappa play queen c5. Reddy doubled. We remember how black once had a center? Now there's no center. The center's gone. The, remember your center that was like your bastion of power? Because of the D4 break, the center is now gone and white has achieved what he wanted to achieve. Rook defending knight. The knight had limited squares. Knight comes out. Queen tries to get out of the way and attack something. Knight D4. I think Rook D5 was a move here that's supposed to be better. Something like going after the queen as it's in a bad square. Taking advantage. This would be an Aikido move. You ready for me? This, this move here, look at the aggression of this move. This move is aggressive. Look at that. I'm attacking the knight. I'm attacking it. Where is it going to go? You're being aggressive. If you play g4, no problem. You've weakened squares so I can go back. So I'm using your energy against you. But in this position, Reddy actually missed this very powerful move. You're attacking me, but what is the minus? Your queen is misplaced. Now when you take me, now I play g4, you can't get back to c5. The minus to your taking my rook, this minus is you block the, the length of this queen's path to the c5 square. That's 
aggression, momentum. I'm attacking, I'm punching, right? This move, queen h5, I'm, I'm punching. I'm getting, I'm putting my pressure on. That's an aggressive move. Oh, but it has its drawbacks. Sorry, uh, we were speaking to uh, Ueshiba. You know Ueshiba, Aikido guy. Yeah, and he says every move has a flaw, a drawback. Every attack you can exploit. And this attack, uh, we, could ex we could exploit, excuse me, not by Reddy's move. We can exploit this way. Yo, people play chess like this against you, run. Like, just run. <laughs> just run away. <laughs> because it, their, their mind is on a Yoda level right there. That's a whole different way. Oh, attack. Oh, attack. Oh, no attack. The force is not with the attack. The force, the force is not with the attack. <laughs> uh-uh. Not when you play like that. When a guy or a, a player... Seize into the weaknesses of your attacking ideas. You're in trouble. You feel me? You're in trouble. Reddy didn't quite get that, but his knight, knight d4 is a very strong move as well. The queen also has left. So guess what's weak also? Squares like c6. The queen's gone. We're going to attack you on the opposite side. The wild side. So capital. Reddy took back. And now he tries to centralize his queen. Try to take advantage of this pin. Sorry, Kappa. Guess what? The weakest square relative to a given piece is the square it's standing on. Your queen just did that, attacking my... What did your queen do? You attacked my rook, you say. Oh, you attacked my rook. Congratulations. But the weakest square you're, you, you, for a given piece is the square it's standing on. It looks like my rook's hanging. Let me move it. No, 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 no. Thanks for attacking my rook. You gifted me the attack on the rook. I appreciate it. So much love the attack on my rook. I love it. I love your attacks. Please attack me some more. Can you find another attacking move? Like, for example, this check. Could you please play this check so I can just put F3 in your face and ask your queen where it's going to go? Like, where's your queen go now? It can't go anywhere along this rank. It can't go here. It can't go here. Can't go here. Can't go here. It could go here, but I'm going to drop knight c6 on you and make you feel some pain. Please, where are you going to go? You're going to play queen a8? Is that what your whole queen h5 excursion was about? Back to e5, to e4, to a8? Is that what you wanted to play? I mean, come on. Feel it. This is you attacking... The attack being returned. All right? That's what you feel. This is the Aikido on the board. The hypermoderns playing idea chess, not moves. The moves fit the ideas, not the other way around. So he played queen c5. Sorry, Kappa. You already gave too much energy, and now your rook's hanging. Rook to c7. And back to E3. <laughs> you know what people play? Literally, it's time to run. It's, it's like literally time to run. Because now the threat is Rook D5 trapping the queen. Hey. Seriously? <laughs> what? <laughs> Your queen was doing all this other stuff. Oh, industry subscribing at tier three. Thanks so much. You felt the knowledge was profound enough to subscribe at tier three. That's a big moment. I very much appreciate the love. Absolutely. Wow. And, and yeah, trying to drop the knowledge in a way where you can feel that generous. Very much appreciated. Very much appreciated. So you see this queen has been dancing and doing all this stuff. That's moves being played. That's moves being played. He's trying to attack. But... Reddy is using those moves against me. All right. Thank you very much for cheering to, uh, to Saint Dead. Am I saying that? Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Every attack has a drawback. Every one. Even white's moves have drawbacks. It's just that black is being exploited. White's, aren't. white's moves aren't being exploited. He did actually... He probably has to sack an exchange right now to save his life and try to keep playing, but he's going to be worse. He's going to be lost. Thank you, Bangtown, California. R the great Capablanca in this position played knight to e5. 
And here, ready played rook one to d5, and kappa resigned. Hits, hits, hits. I mean, you do what you want. One very nice line here is knight c4, forking, forking the pieces. That's what he thought. And in, in, in Aikido, there's a principle that if your opponent wants to do something, give them the chance to do it. Right? Give them the chance to do it. It's weird. I know it's weird. It sounds weird. But this, like, go ahead and do it. You're going to fork my pieces. But unfortunately for you, I take your queen, you take my queen, and then I exploit your attack with a move like this. Now your knight's uh, wondering, where do I go now? Like, knight e4? Sure. Knight d5? Hitting Joey? Hitting Joey? Hitting Joey? And it's it's the night again. It's the night. This is the night show. And you can cry, but this is over.